Ciao. Hi everyone, this is me, Grazia Logier. It's so nice to be back here on Cake Flicks for this brand new edition of Caking All Over the World. I am absolutely thrilled. Thank you again, Paul and David, for inviting me to uh, this incredible uh, day. Uh, thank you to our main even sponsor, the Cake Decorating Company. Um, hello Virginia, hello, hello Cindy, it's so nice to be here. So I'm just going to um, go very quickly through uh, what I've been preparing for you guys today because uh, as you might all know, hello Kelly, oh yeah the crazy Kelly McWilliam that will be with you tonight. Uh, it's going to be amazing I'm pretty sure, like the rest of all the artists. Um, yeah, because I've been preparing lots of stuff, you might all know because uh, you have seen our friend uh, Sydney Gulper and doing some isomalt stuff. She'll be on today later on in the afternoon. Uh, and as you might know, isomalt needs a little bit of time to dry. Uh, so I've prepared most of the bits to, uh, to assemble today. Uh, I'll be taking you through every single part of the process. And if you have any question at any point or you want to see a bit more of the process, feel free to um, send me a little message on my page, Design Sucre, and um, I could post the whole, uh, the whole tutorial. I could like, um, yeah, record it and then make it a little bit longer. So yeah, I'll um, forget about my, my little uh, horns. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, let's get ready. Uh, so just to show you what I've been using, I've been using, I've, I've told you about the isomalt. Hello California, uh, isomalt and rural icing. And uh, as you might know, I'm an ambassador for Squire's Kitchen and I'm using for um, this um, stained glass effect, some black rural icing. As you might all know, it's very difficult. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the headwear. Yeah, it is very difficult um, to uh, get a very dark, uh, dark black coral icing. So this mix is absolutely perfect for you. Really easy and simple to use. Hello Ireland. Um, you just basically have to rid uh, the back of the packet and add uh, the amount of water that it says you need. And that's it. You've got some perfect coral icing, which I've got here in a little pot. So as you can see, it is absolutely black. Hello Canada, so I've got it in a piping bag already and I've got everything piped but I will show you how I do this. Uh, for those who have already been doing some rural icing before, um, you might be a little bit intrigued by the consistency of my icing because I'm going to pipe the outer lines. Um, but yeah, uh, it is a slightly more runny consistency than usual and the main reason why is because I want to be able to uh, really and kind of join all the lines together, um, which would be a lot harder for me if it was the proper, I would say, piping consistency. So I'm gonna tilt my camera and hopefully you'll get to see my work. So I've, I've picked this pattern here and I've got to uh, give credit to uh, the person who uh, designed that uh, pattern and I think it's called Stained Glass by Raven Talker. So whoever Raven Talker is, thank you for this amazing pattern because I'm absolutely loving it. So the first thing you want to do, I am going to be um, doing, I'm just going to show you. I've got this one ready for, for you guys, so ready here. Um, the first thing you want to do is to have this pattern on some um, aluminium foil. The reason why I'm choosing aluminium foil is because um, I want the icing and both the isomalt and the icing to really stick to it. So I've tried a lot of different mediums like a really thick acetate that's really meant for isomalt work but it wouldn't really work with the rural icing. Uh, with the heat of the rural icing um, the uh, plastic from the sheet would just um, kind of uh, go in a high temperature too quick so um, the icing will just um, kind of make a dome like it will miss shape so the only thing that I found that keeps the shape is some just a uh, very simple uh, aluminium foil which you all probably have at home. I've got some masking tape here and what I want to do is just take a little bit of my masking tape, take my pattern here, lay it straight on my um, aluminium foil I'm just attaching it so that 
obviously it doesn't uh, move. Um, simply going to trace my pattern. So I'm going to go, I'm going to forget about the outer pattern because it'd be too big. So I'm going to go from here to um, here. Right. And what you want to do is just to trace with a normal pen, something that will leave an indent in um, your aluminium foil. So I'm going to do it quickly, but I've got it already ready on the side because I'm not going to spend uh, 20 minutes doing this because I'll be running out of time. And for those who wanted to know a little bit more about me, because I know Paul and David didn't have enough time to do it, and I'm pretty sure they would have done, they would have said the funny fact about me, which is why I've got those little red horns, it's because I used to play in a, a heavy metal band. <laughs> well, let's say uh, hard rock and heavy metal, and we used to do a lot of Metallica covers. So that's it. You all know it, Paul. You can't, you can't say it anymore. <laughs> So, okay, so what you want to do, I don't know if you can see, well, you've got the outlines here and you're going to simply do the same with the rest of the pattern. So you go over it with your pen. So I'm just going to do the moon shape for you so that you can see it very quickly. So I've got the moon here and let's say I want to do this bit here so that you can see. It's really hard to do this in 50 minutes. Paul and David, you're putting so much pressure on us. But guess what? I'm loving it. So look at this. I'm just going to remove this. And I guess you can see the indents right on it. So this is what you want to get so that you know where to pipe your pattern. I'm going to set this aside. So as you can see, I'm using like just... just um, um, wood, wooden boards because it makes it a lot easier for me to bring from one place to the other so I've got it already here um, that's designed and piped see, and I'm going to move that here so it's facing the other way around but it's not an issue and you've got the whole pattern let's see if I can tilt it a bit more like so Yes. So I've got my uh, little piping bag with some uh, isomol toys. Uh, not isomol, sorry, raw icing. And uh, what you want to do, so it's to literally. So this is a number two PME tip. And I found that I want something to be slightly on the thicker side. Okay, so what you want to do is touch and then lift but press with a constant pressure and then stop pressing and put down so you get lines so as you can see it is slightly more on the uh, runny side it's not runny runny but um yeah so i'm gonna do this quickly on here so touch and then lift 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 use your other hand as a support and as a guide and then stop pressing and touch okay so you've got a first line I'm gonna do the same here. So always make sure your the tip of your piping tip is clean. And I'm gonna do the same here. Lift, lift, lift. And touch. Always keep a paintbrush next to you with a little bit of water. You don't want it super wet, but you want it a little bit of water just to be able to correct any mistakes. I'm going to do this line here. Oh. oh, and it broke, so it's not an issue. As it's quite a, not a really thick one, you can go back over it if you need. And with your paintbrush, correct any little mistake that you've got. So, as it's not just raw icing, it, like, it'll be covered with isomorph. It's a lot more forgiving than just... Um, the raw icing itself. Okay. Okay. So my hands shouldn't be shaking that much, but as I'm doing a live, I have to say I'm a bit stressed. 
so forgive my shaking. So I'm not sure I can see all your questions, but um, yeah, if you uh, need anything, I'm right here. And I'm gonna try see your questions at the same time. Okay, I've got your comments now. Such a steady hand, Sebastian. Yeah, wishful thinking, I'm too stressed. So, you will keep doing this, All right? Keep using your little paintbrush to correct any mistake. And the main thing is you want the raw icing to be sticking to um, the, um, to be sticking to um, any other part of icing. And the most difficult part will be the moon. So that rounded shape. So lift, really lift your piping tip right trying not to put my hands in the icing already so see this is why i want my icing to be uh, slightly more on the runny side um because i want to be able to um mix my lines Uh, is that still working? Because yeah, my videos seem, seem to uh, freeze a little bit. So, uh, hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. Uh, I've seen one of the questions saying, um, did I put anything on the paper? No, I haven't put anything on the paper. And like royal icing, um, you don't want to add any fat to your, um, to your paper uh, because, well, the isomalt will, will um, come off the uh, foil very easily anyway. So, um, I know you don't want to add any fat to it. So, just keep going on your design, touch, and um, yeah, for this part, come back here. Okay, so can anyone comment if you um, still see me um, on video because well, I'm not too sure about it. Um, it's always a bit scary. Okay, cool. Oh, awesome. So for this part inside, again, I'm not going to show you every, the whole thing because I've already got it piped on this side. Just do, this is the broomstick. So just make sure you pipe it. So that's, that at this point, this is literally your choice, whether you want to do this bit in isomalt, which will be a lot harder because it's just a tiny, tiny area. Or if you, um, want to do it in rural icing like I've chosen to do uh, because as I said it's a very very small part and yeah it would be really difficult to um to do it if uh, with um ice vault. and I think as I'm using rural icing anyway it's a good thing to be able to mix stuff like techniques and mediums so you could decide to have some sort of bar relief in roll icing somewhere and some isomalt um, in some other places. Okay, so you'd keep doing that for a good while. I'm gonna make sure my uh, isomalt is at the right temperature in my microwave, and for the which, keep going steady hand. Well, as steady as you can and do so that's a dress a little stop here and a little stop there so that's my microwave going 
Okay. And you do the same here. Ooh, my hand is shaking bad. Too stressed. Oh, see, this is what you're doing to us. Even though we're loving it. That's it, I'm not shaking anymore. Okay, so that's the main principle of this. So as you can see, um, doing the outline. So some of you might know um, uh, Yenna's way. And um, that's where I got the first idea from the, um, the stained glass from. But he's doing it in um, gum paste. So this, uh, these outlines could be done in gum paste. And that's how I tried it first. But then... I find it really difficult to do and I thought I needed to find an easier way which is what I thought about a rule icing and uh, it works really great uh, but again you have to use no fat underneath otherwise uh, with the heat of the icing mold um, the roll icing is very likely to lift and just break so you want it to be stuck to the paper okay so that would be a hair that's it. And then the hat. And I'm going to make sure the hat touches the circle from the moon. And touch. And again, if you've got any little mistake or area that's not super neat, use your um, paintbrush. Okay. So at this point, I think you've got the idea of what you're supposed to do. As you can see, uh, it's, it's all attached to uh, this board with masking tape. So I'm going to turn it the other way around so I can use the one that's already made. Let's turn this a little bit more. Yep, that's it. Okay. And I just want to do this little one quickly because I want to show you. So that's just a triangle shape. Uh, that's a random one. Uh, I've made a triangle for the base of my lantern. Um, and I want to show you a cool technique to do some um, uh, spider web. Okay. So I'm just going to do this and leave it to dry. So yeah, I forgot to mention at this point, you need to leave the uh, rule icing to dry a little bit. Um, so you will need at least, I would say a good, I would leave it like an hour and a half or two hours minimum, uh, especially depending on uh, where you are. Uh, if it's very humid where you live, you might need to wait a little bit longer, like maybe up, like I would, I would suggest you do it the day before and then you start filling it the next day, like the next morning. Okay. So I've got some colours ready. For uh, this, I have been using some ready tempered ice milk from uh, my sponsor, Squire's Kitchen. Obviously, uh, the one from Sil Sydney Galpern works brilliant too. It's just that I don't have any with me. And uh, yeah, um, I needed to try Squire's and it works brilliant. Um, to colour it, I've used some airbrushing colours from Squire's as well. So for the moon, for colouring the uh, moon, I've gone for some uh, bright white airbrush color and then we'll be using some uh, party purple, some jazz blue and some black. So these are the colors that I've been using. We are going to need a few barbecue skewers to move the color around. So I don't need my paintbrush anymore. And um, so yeah, what's the difference between uh, ready tempered isomalt and uh, isomalt that's not ready tempered? Uh, well, the main difference, oh, someone's at the door, they'll have to wait. Um, ready tempered isomalt, you just have to put it in the microwave and wait until it melts, uh, until it's melted. So, oh, I'm sorry, um, they're just insisting. Uh, so yeah, 
Um, you have to wait until it's melted and iso malt that's not been melted, uh, it comes in little grains and you have to use 3% of water in it in order to temper it, which means like for example, uh, if I'm using 300 grams of not tempered iso malt, I'm gonna add nine grams of water in it and then just uh, warm it up over uh, your boiler. I've got some here in a little pan, so as you can see, it's bubbling on my on my uh, hob. Okay. So I've left it to uh, be at the right temperature, and I've got my other um, little pot. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using for this. I'm using some uh, very cool little um, silicone. Uh, pots so they're like flexible. I found them on Amazon, uh, which is one of my favorite platforms as most of you know um, I'm just gonna put it back in the uh, microwave because it's um, not um, Ready and it needs to be slightly um, warmer than this Looking at the time, it's 20 past um, 12 UK time, so I'm still fine. So, okay. So, I'm gonna start with some. Let's see what color is ready. I think my black seems doesn't seem ready, so it needs about 20 more seconds. So, yeah, when you re reheat or melt your uh, ice malt in the microwave, make sure you don't put it for too long because it can burn. So, you're going to leave it in the microwave for a few um, seconds, like let's say 30 seconds, and then check it, and then 30 seconds again until it's ready. All right. So, I've got purple ready so careful it's really really hot so as Cindy might have said before uh, when you use isomalt you get used to the heat but um, Paul can you remember your finger at the uh, demonstration at Cake International a couple of years ago I remember you did put you did burn a little bit of your finger I'm sorry by the way uh, but yeah this happens and you have to be very careful there are some gloves uh, for isomalt use that protect you from the heat um, but uh, I'm not using them, but they, they are really handy. I've got my um, template here, right, so I'm keeping it next to me, so that's my template, and I'm going to do the purple bits that are there. So what's cool about these little pots, they've got a little like beak, and you can squash them a little bit, so be careful not to burn your fingers, but you can squash them and can have a little bit more control over, um, you know, how much you pour. So I'm gonna try and pour it with you being able to watch. So little droplet by little droplet, just pour the isomalt in the cavities. And with my barbecue skewer and the point is touching the foil, I'm making sure I've got isomalt everywhere in my little cavity. Just be careful not to uh, pour too much isomalt uh, because it can over flood in the next cavity, which you don't really want because then, then you'd be losing that sort of, you know, stained glass effect. And move on to the next one. So very carefully, little by little. So as you can see, this is a small, small area and I dropped a little bit there. So I'm gonna try and remove it as quick as I can. That's it. So that's not gonna affect my pattern. Okay, bring the isomalt to the side of your pattern and keep going. So, as it's really, really warm, I cannot really watch your questions at the minute, but I will make sure I'll have a look through all your comments and I'll answer every question that you might have asked. I'm um, sorry in advance if I can't look at the same time, but really this is super, super hot. I'm gonna pour some more. So 
try not to pour too much, as I said, and with your barbecue skewer, touching this, the aluminium foil underneath, make sure you um, fill in the whole cavity. So you have to be very careful about the consistency of your isomal. You don't want it too runny because it's really, really hard to control, but you don't want it, um, let's say, not, not hot enough, not runny enough, because then it'll be very difficult to pour and you won't, be, you won't have enough time to um, use your barbecue skewer on, on the edges and in the corners because it will set too quickly. So it takes a little, a little practice to uh, get that consistency and temperature right. But um, yeah, once you play a little bit with your isomalt, um, you, you will get it right. So I don't know if you can see guys. Um, yeah, well, I've seen a comment too. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, please give it a go. But again, just watch out and be careful with your fingers. The good thing about doing this, and by the way, um, using this um, stained glass technique uh, awarded me a gold cake international a couple of years ago in the uh, wedding cake category, which means that yes, you can use this technique for wedding cakes or any any type of um, cake really. You can adapt to, to any design using, ooh, that's a bit too much, using any type of pattern. I did use a flower pattern because, well, some of you might know um, my, main, my main activity, let's say, is flower making, like sugar flowers. But, um, so I did adapt it with a flower pattern, but you could do anything. You could do animals, you could do little stars, moons, um, little characters, or just like flowers and other patterns, like anything will work really. Oh, I forgot that little area because I'm too busy talking. Oh. So I'm not too bothered about this one because it's going to be black. So that little droplet, not too much concerned about. And I've finished with my purple, just, just checking the time. So it's time for now. So I'll make sure the uh, next one is ready. So again, this is in my, um, my, my next little uh, pot is in the microwave and I'm just putting back at the right temperature. So just reheating for a few seconds. So I can show you with the blue, that's the blue is supposed to go right next to the purple. So I'll start next to the first places where I um, um, poured my isomalt. And don't pour too much because you don't want the um, colours to um, overflow again and um, mix or like, you know, um, yeah, mix with the other colour, like the colour next to it. If it happens and it does a little bit here, just quickly run your, um, your skewer in the middle very carefully because you don't want to break the ice in and that should be enough. Okay, so a little bit blue here. And make sure, scrape the paper underneath because you want that color everywhere. So when you use your isomalt again and you, you take it out of the microwave or out of the hob, straight from the hob. It will be bubbling a little bit. Um, so just wait until it's not bubbling anymore to pour it. Otherwise, you'll have too many bubbles in your pattern. And well, you, there's something you can do about it using a blowtorch, um, but it just makes things a little harder. So might as well start with the um, right consistency and temperature and make your life easier. So I see I'm just using my skewer to um, go along the side of my pattern here. I think it looks really cool. I don't know what you think about it, guys, but 
I mean, I really like, um, I really like this. Um, so someone said, I'm just checking, hello no hard. someone said, doesn't the heat of the ice melt, melt the raw icing? Well, actually no, and that's the really amazing thing about it. That's what scared me first when I thought about using uh, raw icing, but no, it doesn't actually. What can melt your um, raw icing, unfortunately, is the blowtorch, um, so, which is why it's always better to try and, you know, start with the uh, right consistency, um, you know, first thing, because otherwise, when you use your blue torch, you'll have to be very careful. I'm not saying you can't do it, I've done it, uh, but yeah, it can melt a little bit the, um, the roll icing, which isn't such a big deal because, well, it doesn't melt completely. I'll say it will um, burn a, little, a lot more than, than, um, than um, how do you say that? It'll burn it more than melt it. It won't melt and spread. It'll just bubble and burn. But you don't want it. But if it happens, keep practicing. Keep, keep. It's just about being uh, really accurate when you pour the ice. And the more accurate you are, and the easier and it will, it will be, and the better it will look. But it can happen. We all make mistakes. So that's a little bit here. I'm using an exact O knife to kind of try and trim it. See, it's gone because it's cold. Okay. I've reheated a little bit my um, blue isomalt because it was um, too, not too cold, but it wasn't um, runny enough. So yeah, the beauty of these little pots is that you can be quite accurate with them. Um, I really like using them. They're, they're actually quite cheap. I can't remember how much I paid, but I think it was probably around, I don't know, about 10 euros, let's say eight, nine pounds for three of those, which is really um, good value, I think. And they come in different sizes, like different, um, some will be small, some are gonna be up to one liter, I think. So in those, you can use like larger amounts of for, um isomalt so they are really really cool okay Woo. that was a big bubble trying to okay off and that's it removing that a little bit straight away and it's gone So be very, very, very um, cautious because again, it's super hot, and don't pour, don't pour too much ice in um, ice mold. Okay, a little bit here, and that's it. And there's that tiny, tiny little bit there. So it'll be like one or two droplets, maybe three okay and then very quickly bring it there right so i'm done with the blue and the purple and i'm going to um start now with the uh let's say what can i do black should i do black now or should i do the um sort of orangey brown so i'll do the orange and brown color for the hair and the broom so using exactly the same technique i'm pouring the isomalt and working it inside the shape that's it and I'm gonna do it here that's gonna be one or two drops that's it oh and it's going in some more blue damn it's okay I can handle it and I can live with it okay so I'm done with the um, brown, I'm gonna use some black now. So black for the dress and the hat. So be very cautious again. Little droplets. It can be hard sometimes to be really accurate in very small areas. 
but again it, it will take you just a little bit of practice and you'll be perfectly fine yeah these little cups are perfect you know what said it doesn't stick on aluminium foil i don't know this technique it actually does stick to the aluminium foil that's what we are looking for but we will flip it over and we will remove the foil and it will, will work absolutely fine it's really easy to remove so we won't have any issue at all or at least we shouldn't so i'm starting with this sleeve so you'll see for the sleeve i'll do slightly different because it's like one piece like the dress is in is in one piece but i want these little areas to be uh, completely um uh, filled this cavity is before adding the rest because if I wait until the end if I try to pull the old dress and do the little gaps at the end it won't work because it will have set already so I'm working in sections like you would do with royal icing for example you would work in sections as well so I'm gonna be very very gentle with this tiny tiny one here whoopsie yeah Great, and cover that purple that was in there by mistake. And we don't see it anymore. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure you haven't seen this before. Well, actually, I'm not sure I've seen anyone do um, that before because that really came up with uh, using the aluminium and the, um, well, the combination of aluminium and uh, raw icing. Um, something that came up to my head I haven't seen it anywhere um, some other people might do it though we don't get to see what everyone does um, but yeah this works I found that th this worked really fine for me and we're almost finished with um, this little witch the last thing I'm gonna do is pour some white Oh, and I wanted a little bit more blue as well. So I think I can use my um, white. I think it's ready. You wouldn't know, guys, but I literally spent whole, the whole morning doing this, like trying to keep it at the right temperature. Um, so. So it'd be ready for you. Uh, it wasn't an easy job, I'll have to say. So I've got about 10 minutes left, so I'm gonna stop filling this uh, little um, little um, pattern, because, well, I think you, you get the, the gist now, you know what you need to do. And uh, I hope at least you know and again if you have any question or any doubt or any hesitation um feel free to tell me you can send me messages on my page and i uh, will be more than happy to uh do it again in a full length tutorial for you hello australia thank you uh, hello amy uh you have me on tv <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> I want to show you one last little trick uh, on here, so I'll, I'll do it very quickly and I'm just going to pour, I need my black eyes to be um, ready as well, so I'm going to try and pour this very quickly in that triangle shape and that's what I've done for um, the other walls and the base of my design, so this is a little tricky because um, the oral icing hasn't set so there's a risk um, that it kind of bleeds into um, the um, isomalt and it is bleeding a little bit um, so yeah and just make sure when you do this that your oral icing is absolutely dry before you do this part but for tutorial purposes I'm just gonna show you this I need a tiny bit more there so I'm pouring it with my skewer okay i don't want no bubbles in there so i'm going to slightly blow torch that so i hope you can see so from quite a distance blow torch so very gently to try and remove 
my scented bubbles and then with another skewer I'm gonna come up in one of the angles for example here and I'm gonna do a little line like you would do on eclairs for example or I uh, don't know if you know this dessert that French dessert called Milfoy that's a technique you would do in your um, icing I'm just doing like um, spider web so I'm just pulling so you've got like a little spider web I think it looks really cool and it's super easy to do so it was like absolutely super quick and so yeah I've used that on the side of one of my designs so I'll set this aside and bring uh, well all the pieces that are already dried So I'm trying not to break it otherwise I won't have anything to show you and that would be pretty embarrassing and pretty annoying but yeah as I said I could already I could still do it again uh, and put it on my page so um, in order to avoid any mistakes I'm always looking for something oh yeah that's it I am not trying to lift the um, the tape because I don't want to risk breaking anything so I'm just using an exact o knife and I'm going to cut here so everything could be moved and I'm gonna cut in between my patterns as well to make it just a little bit easier so this one as you can see so I've made it exactly the same way oh okay I'm gonna put it there and so I have sprayed some edible glaze so I've used some PME glaze and I've sprayed it over when it was dry so you have to wait until your isomalt is completely dry and cold and spray it with a little blade glaze so that it's not sticky and then turn it over and very carefully just peel it off Ooh, look at that it's working and I don't know if you can already see through but yeah it, I will show you um, on the next step so I'll just put it back on here for a sec. I'm going to do the same with these ones. I hope they're cold enough because I made them this morning. So I hope they've cooled enough. Seems like they have. Okay, so see, it's completely um, easy to handle. Fold and lift and everything. So I'm setting them aside. Okay, I'm going to do the same with this one. So see, you just have to be very careful because it is quite thin, but it stays really easy to remain, like to remove. And again, I have used no fats or nothing. Um, I really want it to stick to the aluminium foil. So this is my base. I've made it slightly um, bigger than the size of my lantern. And I'm gonna use a little bit of real icing to stick the edges. Why am I using real icing? Well, simply because the size of these are real icing. If they were isomalt, I could easily just, you know, blow torch the size and stick them together, but it, would, it wouldn't work with the um, real icing. So the hard bit in there, and that's where I'm the less confident about this part of the live, I'm scared of messing up so i've got some slightly thicker now roll icing in this piping bag and i'm going to pipe a little bit of icing so you pipe it right on top of the um previous um royal icing and i'm going to pipe this one like a little bit here i'm going to start with the easy well not easy but like okay so that's the trickiest part I guess or I guess I could put it slightly more on the inside and just clean that off with my paintbrush or actually we could and that would be a cool idea I think see that's the beauty of the live I'm gonna do it a different way because oh, I'm getting messy because well actually i'm gonna stick it to the isomalt itself and not to the raw icing 
Bear with me one sec because I need to clean up this little mess I've made. Okay. So I'll just remove that from this side and turn it on the other side. So there's no more mess. That's it. Actually, I'm going to blow a torch the base and it'll make my life a lot easier. If my blowtorch wants to work, so I'm going to blowtorch the base because again it is slightly, slightly bigger. So I'm going to blowtorch it. Not too much. And I'm going to try and pop this thing in there. Okay, just try, need to blowtorch it a little bit more. And that's it. So I can press into um, the bottom part of the isomalt and stick it there. That's the tricky part is trying to hold everything together. And make sure gosh why do we only have two hands because that could deal with another pair of hands okay all right So that's working fine and I can use my icing on this side now. So pipe the icing where the, the uh, icing should be touching. Okay. And hold it for a few seconds until it's stuck. Yeah, Jane, this is where I need three hands. It's terrible. So, um, Naxiali, why don't you use isomalt to glue them? I can use isomalt where I've got isomalt already, like the base. The base, oopsie, works really fine. But for the sides, as the sides are made with um, royal icing, like the edges, it will work with... It will work a lot better with the royal icing because, well, nothing sticks better to royal icing than royal icing. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, is that touching now? Okay. It is, but it's moving. That's the beauty of being live. Okay. Sometimes I use something against it not to, um, well, just to stop it from moving. Stop moving. Okay, so I'm going to pour some of the icing on the side of this one. My hands are getting a little messy. So use some icing all, or some roll icing. So I'm pouring it here. On the two sides that will be stuck to um, the other panels, like the side panels. Okay, a little tricky now. Blow the torch here, the base slightly. Okay. And try, I've said try, to make it fit to the rest before everything's completely dry. That's working. So the, my only issue is that my panels, like my side panels are still a bit fresh. So they, they have a tendency to want to, you know, melt down a little bit. Don't know if you can see that yet because I don't want to move it too much. 
for now. Uh, as the roll icing is not completely dry. Okay. And yeah, that's my last minute. Oh dear. So just to show you the last step, I've got this from Amazon as well. It's a little lamp and I'm going to switch it on. So I've got a remote so that it can change color as well. And I'm going to um, put it, oopsie, inside. Come on. Just hold yourself together. Yeah, I'm holding my breath too. Okay, this is a lot harder now. Oh, I wish you could, I don't know if you can see. I'm gonna tilt my phone. And hopefully you can see the light inside. It is really hard. I don't know if you can see that little light and you can control what light or if it has a candle effect or something. Well, I hope you can see it properly. Like so. But yeah, that's our stained glass lantern done. And you can use this. Um, you can use this as a... It's moved. Okay, you can use this uh, as a topper for your cakes or just as a decoration for um, uh, your um, sweet tables and stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed it and see you later. I'll answer all your questions and yeah, just stay safe and take care and enjoy your day on Cake Flicks. Bye bye.